Hello everybody and welcome to another Vintage Fans and More how-to installation video. Today we're installing the Morpheus 3 from Modern Forms. This installation guide can also be applied to the Morpheus 2. The steps are essentially the same but of course with one less blade. Everything with this installation is pretty straightforward. There are a few unique moments as well as the technology setup aspect. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Before you begin, turn off power at the breaker or fuse. Open the box. As always, I prefer to remove all the contents to make sure that all parts are accounted for and that nothing is damaged. Locate the motor assembly, blades, and motor screws. Remove the two pre-installed screws from the motor and discard. Align the blades with the motor and attach with motor screws. All blades can be attached and tightened securely. I got all three blades started, then tightened everything at the end. Due to all the curvature and the slippery nature of these blades, this process can be a little bit tedious. A second pair of hands to help hold everything in place might be beneficial. Locate the blade collector ring and blade collector ring screws. Turn the entire fan assembly over and install the blade collector ring onto the bottom side of the blades. Installing every screw does take some effort as it's likely that not every hole will line up. These screws also self-tap into the plastic material of the blades and take some effort to get started. Despite this, and as tempting as it may be to leave out a screw or two, it is important that you install them all. This ring really pulls the blades together to achieve the seamless appearance of the fan, and each screw plays a crucial part in that. I went through and got all of the screws started, then went back and tightened them all securely. Locate the light kit plate. Remove the rubber band from the light kit wires on the bottom of the fan if you haven't already. Remove one of the three screws on the mounting ring and loosen the other two. It does not matter which screw you choose to remove. Feed the wiring through the center hole of the plate, then align and engage the keyhole slots onto the two screws. Reinsert the third screw, then tighten all securely. You can delay installing the no light cap or light kit until the fan is on the ceiling to avoid damage to them. However, I am following the instructions in the Modern Forms manual and they do it now. If you are selecting the no light cap option, locate it now. Align the notches in the cap with the tabs in the plate and rotate clockwise until it stops turning. You may need to hold the motor coupler on the other end to make sure it engages entirely. If you are using the cap, the LED module should not be connected. If you are choosing to install the light, locate the LED module, mounting screws, and light shade. Plug together the corresponding single pin connectors from the fan to the LED module. Start one screw into the mounting plate. Tuck the wiring in behind the LED module, then slide one of the mounting notches onto the screw. Insert the two remaining screws, then tighten all securely. It is kind of tight quarters behind the LED module, just make sure that no wiring is being pinched when you're tightening the screws. Align the notches in the glass with the tabs in the plate. Rotate clockwise until it doesn't turn anymore. Again, you may have to hold the motor coupler from below just to make sure everything engages properly. Locate the downrod assembly, canopy and canopy ring, and coupling cover. Flip the fan assembly back over, taking care not to damage the glass or cap. Unbundle the wiring, making it as straight as possible. Loosen the two set screws in the coupler so that they won't interfere with the downrod threads. Remove the clevis pin, washer, and cotter pin from the downrod. Retain these parts nearby. Bundle the wires and feed the ends through the bottom side of the coupling cover. Repeat for the canopy ring and canopy. Pull all excess wiring through and allow these parts to sit down on top of the fan. 
feed the wiring into the threaded end of the down rod. Ensure that all wires exiting the other end are on one side of the interior pin to avoid the wires twisting themselves inside the down rod. Pull all excess wiring through, slide the previously installed parts up onto the down rod, then screw the down rod into the coupler. Continue until the holes in the down rod align with the holes in the coupler. At this point, reinsert the cotter pin through the coupler, reinstall the washer, then insert the clevis pin onto the cotter pin. Tighten the two set screws securely. Push the coupling cover back down until it rests evenly on the coupler. Allow the other parts to rest on top. To keep my fans in like new condition, I usually do not cut the lead wires, but now is the time to do so if you would prefer to. As always, I have my sample prop to demonstrate. Simply extend the wires and trim them evenly, leaving approximately 8 to 12 inches or even a little more coming out the top of the down rod. Restrip the ends, then you're ready to move forward. We will now move to the ceiling. If you have an extra wire for separate light control, cap it and tuck it up into the box as we will not be using it for this installation. Locate the mounting bracket. Fasten the mounting bracket to your electrical box or building structure with appropriate screws. Ceiling fans should only be mounted to electrical boxes visibly marked as being suitable for ceiling fan support. If you have any doubts regarding your electrical infrastructure, contact a qualified electrician. Fasten the screws until the mounting bracket sits snugly against the ceiling. Push the wiring out of the way in preparation for hanging the fan. Completely remove one screw from the bottom of the mounting bracket and loosen the other about halfway. It does not matter which screw you choose to remove. Lift the entire fan assembly into the mounting bracket. Ensure that the notch in the ball engages with the tab in the bracket to prevent the down rod from rotating. Locate the control receiver. Make all wiring connections. Green ground wires from both the fan and the mounting bracket as well as the receiver go with ground from your ceiling, typically green or bare copper. Red, gray, and yellow wires from the receiver marked to motor connect with corresponding colors from the fan. The white wire from the fan connects to the white wire marked for light on the receiver. The black wire from the fan connects to the blue wire marked for light on the receiver. The remaining white neutral line in wire from the receiver connects with neutral at the ceiling, typically white. The remaining black hot line in from the receiver connects with hot at the ceiling, typically black or red. This completes wiring connections at the ceiling. Tuck the house wiring connections up into the box. Slide the receiver into the center of the mounting bracket. Tuck the other connections and any excess wiring in around the mounting bracket. This is an instance where I do highly recommend trimming your lead wires as it's very difficult to fit everything in the canopy otherwise. I apologize that the blade kind of got in the way here, but the next step is to raise the canopy and engage the keyhole slot onto the single screw left behind. Next, you can insert the second screw and tighten both securely until the canopy sits flush against the ceiling. Ensure that no wiring is popping out around the top of the canopy that could be pinched in this process. Raise the canopy ring and align the screws with the keyhole slots. Rotate clockwise to engage. This completes installation at the ceiling. Locate the wall control. Remove the decorative plate for installation. If you have an extra wire for separate light control at your wall box, cap it and tuck it into the box as we will not be using it for this installation. Please note that a neutral connection at your wall box is required for this installation. Connect the green ground wire from the control to the ground at your wall box, typically green or bare copper. Connect white from the control to neutral at the wall, typically white. Those connections can be tucked away into the box. Connect black from the control to hot at the wall, typically black. Connect red from the control to the switch leg that travels up to the fan, typically black or red. 
Tuck all wiring connections into the box, then fasten the control with the included screws. Ensure that no wiring is pinched in the process. Snap the included switch plate back on by pressing gently around the edges, or remove entirely and install your own decorative plate. This concludes regular installation. Restore power. Your fan is factory paired and ready to operate using the wall control. If you wish to utilize more of the advanced smart features, head over to your app store, search for the Modern Forms app, download and install, then the app essentially walks you through all the rest of the setup. Switch over to sign up and create an account with Modern Forms and the rest is very straightforward. The app allows you to set scene photos for your room, control any of the fan functions right from your smart device, or schedule your fan to run itself, among other features. Once you've set up your desired amount of control technology, your Morpheus is ready to use. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave. New installation videos like this are coming out more often than ever before, so if you like these videos, you don't want to miss the next one coming out. One more thank you to Modern Forms for teaming up with me, making this video and others possible. Thank you all for watching today, and I will see you on the next one. Click left for my Morpheus product review or click right for my entire Modern Forms playlist.